Hello everyone, I'm Joseph Dinesh, a Catholic commentator from Sydney, Australia. I'm sure most of you are aware that J.D. Vance was recently announced as the Republican vice presidential candidate. You might also know that he's a senator from Ohio, the author of the New York Times bestseller, Hillbilly Elegy, and is married to an Indian immigrant with three children and served as a Marine. However, a lesser known fact about him is that he's a convert to Catholicism from atheism. The most interesting fact though about his conversion is that he openly calls out the Protestant doctrine of once saved, always saved. And that's what we're going to talk about in today's video. Before we start, I would like to define the doctrine of once saved, always saved for better understanding. The doctrine also known as the doctrine of eternal security is a belief held by some Protestant Christians that once a person has accepted Jesus Christ as their savior and has received salvation, they are guaranteed eternal life and cannot lose their salvation regardless of their future actions or behaviors. This belief is based on the idea that salvation is a gift from God granted through faith in Jesus Christ and it is not dependent on human effort or merit. With that understanding, let's read what J.D. Vance said in an interview about this Protestant doctrine and why it didn't make sense to him based on his own life experiences and the people he has encountered. I quote, J.D. Vance says, One of the things Hillbilly Elegy is about is a struggle to find stability in your own life, but also to become a good person when you didn't have an easy upbringing. That means being a good husband and a good father and being capable enough to provide to your family. One of the most attractive things about Catholicism is that the concept of grace is not couched in terms of epiphany. It's not like you receive grace and suddenly you go from being a bad person to being a good person. You're constantly being worked on. I like that. It's my sense that being a good person is actually pretty hard. Recognizing that grace works over the long haul is liberating, but also consistent with the way I see my life change and the lives of people I have known change. One thing I had trouble relating about some corners of Christianity is this idea that transformation is easy and it happens whenever you say a prayer. That's not consistent with how I see people struggle and improve and change. End quote. What J.D. Vance says exactly captures the inconsistency and the irrationality of the Protestant doctrine of once saved, always saved. To also show that this Protestant doctrine is unbiblical, in the upcoming clip, we have Trent Horn explaining it by quoting the parable of the sower. It's a very interesting connection, so let's listen to him and I will summarize at the end. And others did not. This goes back to the parable. Remember the parable that Jesus tells about the sower and the seeds, right? Uh, you have someone who scatters seeds uh, abundantly throughout the field. Some of them will land on hard ground and, and be picked up. Others will land in shallow soil uh, and they'll, they'll, they'll sprout up, but then they'll wilt under the sun. So you have some people who will never accept the gift of salvation. You have others who will accept it. They'll they'll grow in their faith, but they'll have a shallow foundation and they'll they'll wilt in the sun. Or as the other part of the parable says, they'll be choked by the, by the weeds, by the the temptations of this life. Uh, so on the one hand, there there isn't as much of a difference. Those two individuals will have the same eternal fate. But on the other, God certainly knows that some of them were the, his adopted sons and daughters, and that they tragically. Uh, made shipwrecks of their faith, as St. Paul says in 1 Timothy 1.19, I believe. So to summarize, the parable describes four types of soil representing different responses to the gospel. First, some seeds fall on rocky ground where they quickly sprout but wither away because they have no root. This can be seen as representing those who initially receive the gospel with joy but fall away when troubles or persecution arise. Second, some seeds fall among thorns which choke the plants as they grow. This represents those who hear the word but are ultimately overwhelmed by life's worries, riches and pleasures, preventing them from bearing fruit. Third and finally, some seeds fall on the path that are eaten away by birds, representing those who hear the word but do not understand it and the evil one snatches it away. This indicates that merely hearing the word is not enough for salvation. Having said all that, in conclusion, I would like to quote what St. Joan of Arc said when asked if she knew she was in God's grace. She said, If I am not, may God put me there. And if I am, may God keep me so. I think we can mirror the same answer to the question of salvation. I hope that I am saved. And if not, let God save me. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section. God bless you.